let me just say welcome to Breakthrough, and uh, I'm excited about what God is doing. Um, it's an aw awesome thing to do, to, to find ourselves in the presence of God. It really is. It's awesome to know that He cares enough to come and visit with us in the middle of whatever circumstance or situation we, we might find ourselves. He's here. He's here. He's here right now. Amen? And that's what Breakthrough really is about. Is It's about trusting God in our situation that we find ourselves in right now. Amen? Tonight we want to uh, look at a couple of verses uh, from Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1, 2, and 3. And uh, we're going to uh, uh, be speaking tonight on the, on the topic, laying on of hands. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's a great uh, great topic. I think that you're going to enjoy it. And uh, if you could find uh, a Bible or maybe on your phone or whatever, and just look up Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. And uh, I'll, I'll give you a second to, to find that. But we've, we've really been going through uh, the foundations uh, of our belief and uh, looking at uh, faith, repentance, um, and uh, I think it's been very uh, a very good uh, series, and uh, we're going to continue with that tonight uh, and talk about laying on of hands and uh, the importance of of this uh, transfer of power. Amen. And uh, so let's look at Hebrews chapter six, verses one through three. And I'm going to be reading from the King James version. Um, it doesn't matter what version you have. Uh, I just want to encourage you, wherever you are right now, to uh, read out loud. That's our custom here tonight in this place. So we're going to read out loud. I'm going to read with you. And uh, so if you found that, that's, uh, that's uh, on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of the laying on of hands, and of the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permits. Let's pray tonight. Lord, I just pray right now that you would open up our, our, our hearts, our eyes, our ears, and our minds, God, that we might see, hear, and know something new from the Word of God tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And then uh, I, I want to talk just for a second. Uh, I want to really define the word doctrine. And uh, uh, the word doctrine is a belief that we hold and that we teach. Amen? And the doctrine that we hold and teach is not our doctrine. We, it, it needs to be our doctrine, but it came from the Word of God. Amen? So if we look at the, uh, in the Bible, we're, we're going to find our doctrine in there. And our doctrine actually came from God himself, we, we, we did a study on this and talked about this, but God himself came uh, in the form of, uh, of a man, and his name is Jesus, amen? And uh, we teach the word of God, and we believe the word of God. And uh, I know that God is, God is good, right? We believe the word of God is the Bible, amen? It's the breath of God breathed into our life. Uh, it's important for you to understand that. It's important for you to, to believe that. It's important for you not to just go to church every day. It's important for us to take in the Word of God every day. Amen? And uh, I, I like uh, what we were talking about a little bit ago, uh, to not change our posture, to, to, to remember to stay a Christian. If it's on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, it's in the morning, it's at night, it's in good times, it's in bad times, it's in good situations, things that we like, things, things that we don't like. We have to remember that we are Christians, right? We are believers in Jesus, amen? And, and we walk that out. We, we walk that out every moment of every day. And uh, so even as I say the word laying out of hands, uh, many of us would think about uh, things like, uh, you know, I, when I was growing up, uh, my parents had to lay hands on me a lot <laughs> in the form of a spanking. <laughs> and, uh, and often... Uh, it's important. It was important for them to, to do that. I was very strong-willed, and, and there was a lot of things that I did growing up as a kid that I, I shouldn't have done. And people uh, 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 have seen the benefit of my parents spanking me. I believe in spanking, actually. <laughs> and uh, uh, 
Uh, matter of fact, when I was when I went to school, it was still permitted. The teachers used to spank me <laughs> a lot. I, it would take me to the hallway. I, I spent a lot of time in the hallway, put my hands on the locker and uh, get three whacks or whatever it was. <laughs> and uh, I deserved every one of them. Let, let me talk to you just for a second about the word. I'm going to give you a word, uh, given. And uh, let's look at the word, the word given tonight, just for a second. In Isaiah uh, chapter 9 and verse 6, it says something really powerful. I, I actually think it will change, change your, your walk with God if you understand what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about some really deep, deep things. It says, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And this is a very powerful verse. I could keep reading, but I'm not going to. Because right there in, in, in black and white, we see that, that uh, we, uh, Jesus was all God. He was, he was a, an all man. So he was, he was uh, born in the flesh. He was a child born, just like we were born. He was born uh, uh, from, he, 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 God came and was uh, in the womb, and he was born just like we were born. He had a belly button, just like we had. Jesus had a belly button. It's important for you to know that. He was, he was all flesh, but yet he was also a son given. And it's, it's a, a very powerful statement when we think about that, that we, we, we must understand that Jesus was all, all man, and he was all God. Amen? It's important for you to understand that as a foundational uh, uh, a stone, if you will, in the foundation of your, your belief system. Amen? We must understand that. A child is born, that's, that, that equals flesh. A son is given, that equals God. Jesus was the son of God himself. Amen? It's important for you to, to, to understand that. We, I, I, could, I could really go a lot, lot further to talk about that, but he was the son of God. Amen? He was the son of God. He was all man and all God. Uh, that, that very uh, 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 thought... It, it should it should form part of our doctrine, amen, of who we believe that Jesus is. Who do we believe Jesus is in us, amen? John John chapter 1, verses 12 through 14, it says, uh, but as many as receive him, okay, we must receive Jesus into our life. It's something that we're not, we're, we're born sinners, okay, and we're born again, we become sons, all right? Jesus came so we might have life and we might have it more abundantly, the word says. Uh, but, but as many as receive Jesus, all God, right, all man, as many as receive him into their life, those, those he gives the power to become, the son, become sons. Amen? We can be, we're, we're sons. We're not born of the, of the blood or the will of the flesh nor the will of man, but of the will of God. Amen? It's, it's God's will. He, he's not willing. I, I love that, that verse. For God so loved the world that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God is not willing, right, that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He's not willing. That's not his will that we would, they would die and find ourselves in, a, in hell. Amen? He's not willing that. It's important also to understand that, that the word, if we look at John uh, the first chapter. I love the first chapter of the book of John. And we look at verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. Important for you to understand that Jesus was all God and he was all man. Amen. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. I, I think it's important for you to understand that God, God, God sent him and he still dwells here among us. Amen? Amen? It's a very powerful thought. Not only did, did, did God send him, but Jesus came and he died and sacrificed his life. Uh, I was writing something, and I, I, uh, I, I, I was saying this, uh, this verbiage. It says, it's, it's possible to give without loving, but it's impossible to love without giving. And so, so awesome, that thought, that, was the, the, that verbiage right there, it proves that God loves you. Amen? God loves you because he would not give his life to you if, he would not give his life 
for you if he did not love you. Amen? God loves you. Amen? Understand that. Amen? Amen. Let me talk to you about, about hands just for a moment. Hands. Uh, did, did you ever notice that when, when we shake hands, we always shake with our, our right hand, right? I don't ever, if someone comes to shake with their left hand, it's like, it's weird, right? It just feels funny. Have you ever wondered why we shake with our right hands? Have you ever thought about it much? Because the, the, the right hand, I, I, I'll tell you, I, th I think that it's, it's important to understand that there, there are people that are left-handed, and I don't want to offend you, but there are people that are left-handed, but, but most people, the majority of people are right-handed. And, and so we always shake with our right hand. The right hand represents uh, your power, amen? It represents uh, your strength. And so when you come, actually, uh, if, if, uh, I think uh, if you were at war, it would be nice to extend your right hand because you knew they didn't have uh, a sword in their right hand, right? <laughs> you were going to uh, get killed with, with the right hand because they had extended it. But uh, as long as their other hand was empty. <laughs> but, it, but that's what, it, the, what we do. When, when, we, when we shake hands, uh, often, too, we, you don't think about it very much, but when you shake hands, have you ever noticed whose thumb is on top and whose is on bottom? Have you ever had problems when you reach out to shake somebody? They, they want to put your thumb on top of yours? Uh, often what that means is they want to they want to be your boss <laughs> so so watch watch where their thumb goes and you understand a little bit more about the person that you're shaking hands with okay also uh have you ever shake shaken somebody's hand and, and it seems uh a little weak right and you're like they give you that uh we used to call it a, a milk toast handshake it's like uh oh yeah uh or or the uh, the handshake is like i don't know about this person uh but it's it's interesting uh, if someone shakes your hand and, and they, they give you a strong handshake, right? If you at least match their handshake, right? <laughs> Squeeze just as hard as they're squeezing or give them a good firm shake. It rep you represent yourself better to that person. It's so powerful when you think about uh, simple things like that. Uh, uh, even, even the fact of, uh, as I'm speaking here tonight, if I was to begin to point my fingers at, at you, uh, you would begin to take uh, take my my gestures as orders, right? If I if I if I have my palm down, I'm giving you an order, right? But if I have my palms open, I'm uh, you're more apt to receive what I'm saying to you. So it's important. Also, if if you ever feel insecure, a neat little trick you can do uh, uh, if you're feeling insecure about yourself and you're getting ready to go to a meeting or something, you can uh, you stick your hands together like like this and you just. Do like this a little bit, and you'll you'll begin to feel more confident, okay, uh, in your in yourself or what you're about to to, to go do, and uh, uh, just kind of a neat neat little thing, little little rabbit trail, if you will. <laughs> yeah, also, it's all interesting if you're in a meeting with someone, uh, uh, if your eye level is below their eye level, you you are asking for something from them. If if your eye level is above theirs, often you are telling them what to do. It's, it's just interesting, a little, the little things like that, little tips that you can uh, pick up, but <laughs> I don't know why, why I'm doing all that, but, but uh, often, often in, in, in that kind of a negotiation, you'll see uh, submission, right, or power in, in the simple, subtle things like that. Uh, uh, <laughs> So, so it's interesting when I, I, I say all of this because I want to talk to you about the hand. Uh, because uh, we need to understand where Jesus is tonight. Amen. Uh, uh, in Matthew 26, verses 63 through, and 64, it says, Jesus held his, his, he held his peace, and the high priest answered and said to him, I adjure thee by the living God that you tell us whether you be the Christ or not the Son of God. And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Jesus, <laughs> it's important to know that when Jesus gave his life, he was buried and he, he rose again the third day and he sits today, he, he sits today at the right hand of the power of God. He's on the right hand. Amen. Uh, he's sitting in a position of power. 
It's also important to know in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 6, uh, that we also sit in heavenly places. It's important for you to understand that. So, so it, we are seated right now with Jesus in a position of power. It's, it's important for you to know that. So if I say to you, uh, uh, this is a, r- a really powerful thing, a thought. God, God is, Jesus is all flesh, right? All man and all God. Amen? Amen. And where, where is Jesus right now? Where is he right now? He's, he's in heaven. Amen? Where is he though? He's here. He's here also. Amen? So it's important for you to know that when we talk about worshiping Jesus in spirit and in truth, we know that he is in our heart. Matter of fact, we say that in Romans 10, verse 10, it says, it says, with our, with, our, with our heart, we believe unto righteousness and with our mouth, confession is made. In other words, what is in my heart is spoken out of my mouth. It's important for you to, to know that. But Jesus is in my heart. Come into my heart. Come and be Lord of my life, right? So Jesus comes into my life, and he's in my heart. He's the Lord of my life. Matter of fact, when we say the word Lord of my life, Lord, Lord of, he's my Lord, he, he then, because of my love for him, directs my path. He directs my step because love, right? When I, when I love somebody, when I say I love you, I, I direct, my path is directed by the love of my life, in my heart, amen? So if Jesus is in my heart, he's directing my path, amen? But he's also seated in heaven, amen? We, 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 we got to understand that. We got to understand that. It's, it's important for you to know that. Uh, in, in Matthew 28, let me, let me talk to you just for a second about the word, I'm going to give you a word called transfer, Okay. I want to talk to you about transfer just for a second. In Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, and we, we know this uh, scripture because, uh, uh, because it's, uh, it's, it's the Great Commission, right? It's, it's, that's what we call the Great Commission. It says, uh, And Jesus spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Remember, God is in heaven with God, and he's also here. Amen? We have, we have all power given. Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Because all power was given to Jesus, we're to go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to deserve all things whatsoever I command you. Isn't that, isn't that amazing, just that little statement? Observe the things I command you to do. Where are you going to find the commandments? Where are you going to find what, what is Jesus telling you to do? I'm going to tell you, you're only going to find it in the Word of God tonight. You will, you'll not find it uh, from some pastor on some pulpit. You're going to find it, uh, you're not going to find it from Google, okay? You're going to find it from the Word of God. The only way God will ever speak to you is by taking in the Word of God, amen? You've got to take in the Word of God. It's the breath of God spoken to us, amen? Amen? Uh, uh, it's, and, so, and so go, and, and it, how much power was given to Jesus? Let me, let me just ask you a question. How much power was given to Jesus? All. There wasn't a single uh, ounce of power not given to him. All power was given to him. It, it's important for you to think about that, it, the, the fact that all power was given to him. Amen? Not to some power. So I, I have all. I have a, a God, amen, I have a God that has given all power to Jesus. And where is Jesus at? He's in heaven, and he's here, amen? Think about that when you walk into a situation. All power. And uh, uh, I, I want to go back, because we always talk about those verses right there in Matthew 28. But if you go up to verse 17, go up to verse 17, and it says something really powerful that, that we skim over all the time. It says, and when they, when they saw him, that's Jesus was resurrected. He was walking around uh, the, resurrect, the resurrected Savior. Amen. He was walking around, and all the people, when they saw him, they worshiped him. But it says something really, it says in, uh, uh, it says right there, it says, but some doubted. 
but some doubted. And often in our own life, what we find is that in, in many churches and many, many Christians, uh, I've talked to Christians uh, have been saved many, many years, and they come to me and they'll say, I don't even know if I'm saved. I don't even know if I'm saved. And I, I'm going to tell you that the word doubt right there is really powerful because these guys were seeing Jesus. <laughs> he was walking around, you know, and he, he had the scars and he had the, 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 the side and he had, he had, he, they had seen all of those things and yet they still doubted. They still doubted. And often, I'm going to tell you right now, in our own life, what happens to us is doubt will come in and it will take us to a place we shouldn't be because we doubt the work of God, the work of Jesus in our life. Amen? I, I, in Revelations, it says, it says uh, something really powerful. Reve Revelation 21 and verse 7 says, uh, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. All things. And I, and I said to myself, what is it that we have to overcome? And, and I'm going to tell you right now, the biggest thing that you have to overcome as, as you walk out your walk with Jesus on this earth, is doubt. You have to overcome the doubt in you because the doubt in you is great. It's big. I mean, I'm telling you right now, doubt will keep you from everything God has created for you to be. As a matter of fact, if I was to sit here tonight and feel that what I'm saying is only good enough to fill this one little room, okay? If I believe that God can only fill this little room, or if God can only fill my heart, or if God can only take care of my problem or my situation or, or whatever it is I have going on in my world, I, I, would not, I would not sit in this chair. Amen? I feel that the gift inside of me that God has given me, God has spoke something into my life. And it's so big that as I speak to this camera, it will, it's big enough the Jesus in me, the God in me, is big enough to fill the entire world. Amen? Amen? And that is the kind of God I serve. The one that speaks worlds into existence. Amen? Amen. The one that, that spoke the stars and the one that, that sent His Son, Jesus, all man, all God, to this earth for me because He loves me. Amen? He loves you. He loves all of us. And He's... he's <laughs> If we, really did, if we really believe that, see, the problem is, is we doubt it. And so if we doubt, we, we have no power. It says, he, to him that overcometh, <laughs> I will give you all things, right? Okay? We can have all things or we can have no things, okay? But we must come to a place where we believe it. Amen? Amen? Yes. Hmm. The real question... The real question we need to ask right here is where is Jesus now? Where is Jesus now? Do you believe that he's in heaven at the right hand of God? Do you believe that he's here with us right now <laughs> in the flesh? Come on. And, and Jesus came, right? And he, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, right? He dwells among us today. He's inside of us. We are Christians. That means I believe in Christ, right? That means that He is in me. That's the question. Or do you doubt? Or do you doubt? Hmm. I believe that He's right here, right now, right? Jesus, Jesus is the light of the world, and He's in me. And as I go into the world, I bring the light to the world. Amen? Amen. Let me, let me talk to you for a second about virtue, okay? virtue. In Luke 9 verses 1 and 2 uh, he called the 12 of the disciples and the 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority over all devils to cure diseases and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So Jesus called the disciples and he transferred power. Amen. He laid hands. We, we, it's important for you to understand that there is a transfer that must occur in our life. There is a transfer that must occur in our life. There must be a transfer in our life. Amen? In Mark, uh, I'm, uh, I'm moving quickly, okay? But Mark uh, 5, uh, 29 and 30, it says, uh, there, there's a story uh, about, about a, a, a lady with an issue, okay? 
And uh, I always like to, re uh, I, I bring this up and I put it on the refrigerator at home because, uh, you know, I've been married for 32 years and, uh, and uh, you know, I, I'm, my wife has issues. <laughs> and so, and so I, I say, if I, you know, t you got an issue, don't bring it to me, take it to Jesus. Uh, <laughs> and Jesus, <laughs> but, but there's a beautiful story because uh, this woman was, uh, had battled this issue for many years, okay, and she had wasted her money and went to doctor after doctor, and she didn't know how, how, to, how everything was going to work out, but she one day found out Jesus was coming by, and she, she pressed up through the crowd, okay, and she, she uh, uh, reached and touched the hem of his garment, and immediately she was healed, right? It's, it's a beautiful story, and it's great, but the best part of the story was Jesus says something really powerful in verse 30, Mark 5, verse 30. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned himself around and said, who touched me? Who touched me? There, there was a transfer that happened from, from, from God to, to man. Amen? There was a transfer that happened. I, I want you to see that because it's important for you to know that the transfer only happens when you touch. Amen? You, you must touch the hem of his garment. You must, you must touch him. Amen? And, he, and Jesus knew immediately that, that, that a transfer of power had occurred. And then let's look in Acts 8. Uh, I'm really just skimming over a, a lot of this. It's really deep. We could spend months and months probably talking about these verses. But Acts 8, 17 and 18. And then... They, they laid hands, being the disciples, laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. It's important for, for you to understand that the disciples, Jesus laid his hands on the disciples, the disciples went and laid hands on others, and, they re, and, the, and a transfer of power occurred. Amen? A transfer of power had occurred. And, and Simon set, saw that through laying on of hands, and he offered them money, right? Isn't it, isn't it powerful to think that that, G, that God loved the world, and He sent His Son, and, and he, didn't, he didn't send Him. Uh, the, the price was love, okay? It was love that sent, that, that sent Jesus to the cross. It was love for you, love for me. There was, there, you, you cannot buy love. Love is a gift given freely, okay? And so it's important for you to know that you cannot buy power from God, okay? It's given by love because God loves us. Amen? And then it's in 1 Timothy. I'm almost done. In 1 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 14, uh, Paul is admonishing Timothy, and he says, Neglect not the gift that is in you. Neglect not the gift that is in you. Amen? How many of you believe that you have a gift? How many of you believe that? Neglect not the gift that is in you. Amen? There is a transfer that has occurred. As a matter of fact, I believe that every single time we feel the presence of God, He is creating something in us. Amen? When the presence of God comes, He comes to create. He, he doesn't come to, to, to make you feel good. All right? Yeah, it feels good when the presence of God comes, but He comes to create in you something new. Amen? Something new. And, 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 and we need to be not, not, not a, it's so good when we go to church, we go, oh, that was a great service. I felt the presence of the Lord. And I, I felt the presence of the Lord. I feel energized. I feel lifted up. I feel uh, excited, right? But the gift that when, when the presence of God comes, it shouldn't just come and stay in me. Amen? It should flow through me to the world. There needs to be a flow, right? I, I, I want to see a, a flow of the Spirit of God. I want to become the river. Amen? I don't want to become a, a, a container. I want to be a river that flows, right? So that all of the world can know the same Jesus that I know. All of the world can feel the same love that I feel. Amen? Uh, that love needs to flow through me. There needs to be a transfer of power to the world around us. Amen? Not, not for me. It's not for me. It's not for you. It's for the world around us. If the Christians in this world would just stand up and let the flow of the Spirit of God begin to move through us, okay, we can begin to see the world change around us. Amen? We are the light of the world. 
We are the salt of the world. Amen? We are the ones that, that make a difference. We're, we're difference makers in the world we live in today. Amen? I'm, I'm, I'm excited tonight. I really am. I'm really excited. And I, I, I want to just kind of wrap this up, put a little bow on it, okay? If, I, if, you, if you can give me just a, a minute more, all right? I, I, I was reminded of a scripture, uh, and, we, and we do this every time we take communion. We, we do this every single time. But I, I, see, I saw this in this verse. It's in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 25, it's, it's the communion scripture. We hear it all the time in church. But, but something really powerful in verse 23, it says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. Think, think about that. See, I just said that, and I can feel the presence of God moving right now. I have received of the Lord that which also I have delivered unto you. The same night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had blessed it, he broke it. And he said, this is my body which is broken for you. This do it, and do it in remembrance of me. Right? And then he took the cup. He said, this is, the, this is my blood. And, and, and as we, we look at that, it's a transfer of power in flesh. Okay? We take it in the flesh, but the same transfer has happened in our spirit. And, and I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today. Did, did you know, let me, let me just give you a truth. You, you can never give what you have never received. If, if you have never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you will not understand what I'm talking about. Matter of fact, it would be nonsense to you. But if you have received Him as your Lord and Savior, then, and only then, can you give, amen, to the world what you're supposed to be giving to the world. Only then. But you cannot give if you have never received. I, I can't give you a million dollars because I don't have a million dollars. Isn't that true? <laughs> Some of us can't give love because we've never received love. Amen? Some of us can't even give a smile because nobody's ever smiled to you. <laughs> or we can never look at a reason to have a smile on our face. We don't have no reason, so we can't give what we don't have. I don't have joy. But I'm going to tell you that God wants to touch you tonight, right where you are. He wants to transform your life. Matter of fact, God wants to use you. Amen? He wants to use you. There's a powerful verse. It says, if two or three would agree as touching anything, we'll have, you see that touching, touching? There needs to be a transfer tonight. So I'm going to just pray with you. Is that, if that's all right, I just want to pray with you as we wrap this up. And Lord, I'm just going to pray. <clears throat> Lord, I just pray right now, wherever, wherever they are, wherever you are tonight. Lord, I pray that you would transfer, Lord, that you would, that you would bless those that need to be blessed. Lord, that you would forgive us of our sins. Lord, we plead the blood over all of our lives, Lord, right now, and ask you to come into our heart fresh and new, Lord. And Lord, even as everybody is all around the world or wherever they're listening, God, I pray that they would feel right now the presence of God beyond this camera, Lord, through the lens, God, and that you would bless their life. Lord, that they would feel your presence, Lord, and that they would understand that you are all man and all God, and that you're seated at the right hand of power right now, and you're seated in our heart right now. And Lord, I pray that you would begin to open up our eyes and our hearts, Lord, that we might begin to see and truly begin to understand who we are in this world. And I just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.
Hmm. You know, we're, we're really excited at, at Breakthrough. We're excited about what God is doing. We really are. Sometimes, I'm, I'm, not, I'm going to say it's not sometimes, all of the time, we need a breakthrough in our life. Amen? And it's time for us to be the church. It's time for us to not be worried about what somebody thinks. Right? It's time for us to to receive something into our life and begin to give it out. Amen? Stand up and be who God has called you to be. Don't neglect the awesome gift that God has put in us. Don't neglect it. Don't wait till next week. Don't don't wait till tomorrow. Today is the day that we need to be who he's called us to be. Amen? Amen? I believe. I believe that it's not an accident or a mistake that we are sitting here tonight. Amen? And I believe that God is the God of miracles. And I believe that God will do what has never been done, ever been done in this earth, through us, right here, right now. And I believe that God wants to stir up something. I I believe that God wants to change something. But it must always begin with me. (laughs) The me and all of us. It has to begin with me. Because if I doubt, nothing will ever change. I control the doubt, right? I I love that verse. It says, it says, all things are possible if you believe. And immediately the guy says, Lord, help my unbelief. But if we would believe, all things are possible because God is the God of possibilities. Not in, we are the ones that limit him. Amen? Amen? Amen. God is good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen.